Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we're talking these retinol serums and I want to give you a quick update on the proposed European Union ban on over-the-counter retinols. Now this was teased around six months ago but there wasn't a lot of information out there at the time. Well we now know a whole lot more. So this information is going to cover exactly what concentrations and products are impacted, the time frames for these changes taking place and most importantly the rationale for them. I know that not everyone's going to be watching this video from inside the European Union. For example, I'm here in the UK, so these changes won't actually impact me. But I think when one jurisdiction, territory or area starts to make a change to something, our minds automatically think, there must be a reason for that. Is it still safe to use retinol? And we're going to talk about it all in today's video. So hopefully you guys, wherever you happen to live, can make the right decisions when it comes to your own skincare needs. Sit back, relax, let's stop the proposed retinol ban. Now, before we get into this video, I would, of course, love to know your thoughts and feelings when it comes to these changes. So sign off in the comments section below. How is this going to impact you? Are you still going to stick to your retinol? Or are you going to switch to some of the alternatives? I'm going to talk about some alternatives in this video and where I do, they're all linked in the description box below. So if you want to check them out, explore them in more detail, those links are there for your convenience. All I ask for in return is that you help me to get this message out there loud and clear. There's a lot of misinformation around these changes online and I want to put the record straight so we know exactly where we stand. The best way of helping me to do that is reaching down and giving the video a thumbs up and a like. The more likes a video gets, of course, the more widely YouTube will distribute it on its platform. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so, so much. Now, with all that out of the way, shall we just cut that waffle and delve straight on in? So let's kick things off with what changes are taking place and the timeframes now that's been confirmed. Let's do timeframes first because that's quite easy. The end of this year. I know that's a lot sooner than maybe people were expecting, but from the end of 2023, these restrictions will be in place across the European Union. So if your favorite retinol product is going to be impacted, now will be the time to stock up. I think one of the brands that's going to be most impacted is probably The Ordinary. But fortunately, they always have a sale in the month of November. So if you wanted to stock up on The Ordinary retinols and save some money at the same time, the November sale is just around the corner. So in that respect, maybe the timing works in our favor. In terms of the changes themselves, well, it's not going to be a blanket ban on retinol like some people feared, but actually specific to different concentrations. And it depends where on the body the product is intended for use as to what those concentrations will be. I know, super confusing, but kind of to break it down, if the product's intended for the face, such as a serum, the maximum retinol concentration allowed will be 0.3%. If it's for the body, then actually it's a lower concentration of 0.05%. Let's just be honest, 0.05% retinol on the body is going to do next to nothing. So I think from that deadline, it's probably worth avoiding retinol body products that are manufactured within the European Union. You're just not going to see the benefits, which I think is a real shame. 0.3%, which is the strength available for the face, actually still could work. For me, I think that would be a step back from the products I'm using now. And if you're an established retinoid user, you're probably not going to want to stick to a 0.3%. You'll probably want something stronger. But for beginners and people with super sensitive skin, a 0.3% retinol could actually work really well. Personally, I would reach for something a 1% or higher in terms of pure retinol. But, you know, you need to match the products to your individual skin's needs. What I think will be really, really interesting is a lot of brands don't disclose their percentages. And usually they do that because the percentages are ridiculously low. So I think it'd be really interesting to see, you know, brands like Olay, they're probably not going to be reformulating. They're probably still going to be within the legal limits of, in terms of strength of retinols, even after this change. And I think that'll confirm to us what we've known all along, that they use very, very low concentrations, which is why maybe people don't see the results they're expecting. Match your strength to your individual skin's needs, but know that within the European Union from 20, at the end of 2023, this will be capped out at 0.3%. Now, a lot of people are going to be saying, okay, is it just retinol? No, actually surprisingly, and we didn't expect this, but also included in this ban are retinol esters, things such as retinol palmitate. Now, this is surprising because these are the most gentle forms, so I thought they'd slip under the radar and the European Union wouldn't necessarily be concerned with them. But this um, restriction actually applies to retinol and retinol esters. It doesn't apply to prescription strength products such as tretinoin, and it doesn't apply to retinal. This is personally my favourite form of retinoid, so I won't be impacted by any of these changes anyway. But retinal is actually more potent and less sensitising on the skin. And I think that's recognised by these changes, which is why it's allowed in whatever concentration that it currently is. These restrictions don't apply. 
So uh, there's a lot of fear around why are the European Union making these changes? Should we be alarmed? Should we be abandoning our retinols? And actually they've released their rationale for these changes, which all comes down to the risk of an accumulation of retinol within the body. So they say that using um, retinol serums, topically applied to skin, is perfectly safe. And there is no questions about that in any of the data that they've released. What they do say though, is that they need to make sure that regulations are serving the most hypersensitive. People that might be less tolerant to retinoids and also might have increases in say sun sensitivity. This will impact around 5% of the population, but the, these restrictions are really ge geared towards that 5% in order to protect them. So most of us will have zero issue with higher potency retinoids in terms of accumulation or in terms of the impact on their skin. But because a small subsection does, they want to pitch the legislation at those to protect that. This does kind of make sense, but also it does mean that those of us that have no issue with retinoids in terms of sun sensitivity or in terms of irritation on the skin, of course, are going to be restricted if we live within the European Union. So I would say if you're getting great results and very few side effects from your higher potency retinoids, continue to use them. If you have any concerns whatsoever, switch to a retinal, which is excluded from this, uh, these restrictions, and they document some of the reasons why also. So yeah, let's not demonize retinol. I don't think anything has really changed in terms of the scientific community's perception of the ingredient. It's just about making sure that those that might be hypersensitive to an ingredient are of course covered in the legislation. Now, of course, there is the other school of thought that people say, why should we all be penalized because a small section of people are sensitive to an ingredient? And I do get that. I think we should be able to, as consumers, choose the products that are right for our individual skin's needs. But I also think governments and you know pan-national governmental organizations like the European Union also do have a duty of care. And I think it's about balancing that. Am I surprised that they've gone with such a low concentration of retinol? Yes, I am. Am I surprised that they've targeted retinol esters? Absolutely. But I do also see the rationale behind that. So, of course, everyone's going to have to make up their own mind on this. I'm just glad that in terms of um, retinol, which is my preferred retinoid, there's zero impact. Um, so if at this point in the video you're thinking, maybe it's time I do just switch away from retinol. Maybe there are more convenient options in terms of accessing them from within the European Union. Or maybe I just want to try something different. There are a couple of products and product categories that aren't impacted that I want to talk about in this section of the video. So first up, Granactive retinoid. So I mentioned earlier about retinal, which isn't impacted, but neither is granactive retinoid. And the reason for that is much more gentle on the skin. It has to go through a conversion in the skin to get to where it needs to be. But actually, some of the early studies into granactive retinoid show it can actually be much more effective than retinol anyway. So this could be a much less sensitizing and more effective option. Um, two of my favorites are these. So this is the ordinary granactive retinoid emulsion. Now I said a lot of the ordinary retinoids will be impacted. This one isn't because it's gran active and I would fully, fully recommend this. Beautiful, rich emulsion when it goes onto the skin. It sinks in so, so well and will give you really good effects. Um, it's less sensitizing than traditional retinols and I just think this is, yeah, this is a great affordable option. Will continue to be available in the European Union as it is globally currently. And yeah, I think whether you're new to retinoids or you're um, an advanced retinol user, this, this could be a really great result. Also, some studies of granactive retinoid have started to show how effective it is in terms of minimizing um, inflammation caused by acne breakouts and persistent breakouts. So if you're particularly acne prone, granactive retinoid could work really well for you. Another one of my favorites is this. This is the Allies of Skin Multi-Acids and Retinoid Brightening Sleeping Facial. This I love. Put this on before you go to bed and you wake up with the best skin day ever. This is like a skincare routine in one. You could literally just cleanse the skin, put this on, a moisturizer on top, and you can go to bed and just know that you're gonna have gorgeous skin in the morning. It's got some gentle acids in here to gently resurface the skin, smooth everything out. It's got granactive retinoid in a good concentration. Got antioxidants in here, humectants, hydrators, brightness, everything's going on. And whilst this is normally a little bit out of my personal price range when it comes to skincare, at the moment, it's buy one, get one free. So that's why I've stocked up. I've got a couple on order alongside this one because my skin absolutely loves it. Best thing is, alongside that buy one, get one free, I also have an Allies of Skin discount code getting you 15% off. I didn't think it would, but it absolutely works with that buy one, get one free. So you get buy one, get one and 15% off too, which almost at this point, they're practically giving it away. But no, if you're looking for something to help streamline a whole skincare routine in one, that's definitely the product I'd recommend. 
Now, I mentioned Retinal earlier, and I've got a couple of Retinal-based options. So here we have, uh, this is the Allies to Skin Retinal and Peptides Night Repair Cream. The other one I just mentioned has some exfoliating acids in, works great for my skin, but if you're someone that doesn't tolerate exfoliating acids that well, this is like the non-acid version. This has four peptides, 10 antioxidants, you've got brightening ingredients, and retinal. So the other one is exfoliating acids and granactive retinoid. This is retinal and a blend of peptides, hydrators, antioxidants, and everything. Same principle of a whole skincare routine in one, and the buy one, get one free still applies. Um, I think of the two, um, I like to use that, the one with um, the exfoliating acids in maybe twice a week. And on the days that I don't use it, I would go in with this as it's just a great all-rounder. Great if you're looking to streamline. Um, you can also mix and match that buy one, get one free, so you could buy both of these, and I think the cheapest one would then come out as free in the offer. When I created my own product, which is this, the Mad About Skin Ultimate Anti-Aging Oil, I did so with Retinal because, like I say, it's, it's my favourite form of over-the-counter retinoid, and I knew with these changes coming, I wanted something that would be accessible within the European Union, as well as here in the UK and globally. We ship worldwide, no matter where you are, we'll ship to you. And um, This is a great affordable option. So this comes in at £17.99 for a really rich oil. If you have a dry, dehydrated skin type, I think an oil will probably work best for you. Nourish, hydrate, lock in some of that moisture. And yeah, which is why I wanted to create this. And I wanted to create it with that price point in mind. So no matter what your price point, you'll be able to afford this one. And again, great concentration of retinal. Finally, if you prefer a cream, so that Mad About Skin one is an oil that you mix in with your moisturiser on an evening to give you the anti-aging benefit. If you prefer a cream, then this is the Geek & Gorgeous A-Game 10. This is great hydrating. Same price point as that Mad About Skin one, so it'll come down to whether you want an oil or you want a cream, but this is a great option if you're looking for that cream base. I love this. Um, I do use some of these interchangeably. Retinal just my skin just loves it. I get great anti-aging benefits. It doesn't strip, dry, and irritate. Um, and like I say, when there's that buy one, get one free, the Allies of Skin definitely appeals to me. But at the end of the days, I love the Mad About Skin Oil just to nourish, calm, and soothe. Um, but like Geek & Gorgeous is also a great option. Um, Geek & Gorgeous is also um, a brand that is based and ships within the European Union. So if you're impacted and you want to shop with an EU brand, Geek & Gorgeous are a great option. So in this video, I just wanted to you know, take some of the mystery around the changes. I know there's a lot of concern out there. And hopefully in this, by, and I will link some of the data points and some of the rationale that the European Union has released in the description box below if you want to read about it in a little bit more detail. But there is nothing wrong with retinol. Do you need to throw out your retinol serum? Absolutely not. There might be better options out there, but it's absolutely safe to use. Hopefully we've just been able to explain why these changes are taking place how it's going to impact you and the timeframes. And by the end of this video, hopefully if you want to make the switch, you have some great alternatives and options too. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and wherever you are in the world, guys. Stay safe, stay well, and love your skin. Take care. Bye.